Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Animaking 2 and today I'm going to be giving you part 2 of what if Naruto was a smart prodigy. Remember to get this one to 200 likes as usual, share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and stay in tune because after this I'm going to be posting what if Naruto was a deceitful god so stay in tune for that and I do hope that you guys enjoy and over on Anime King I post a new episode of what if Naruto was a badass genius so go ahead and check out that and enjoy guys and later on i'm going to be posting what if naruto was sent to the marvel world so stay in tune for that and i do hope you guys enjoy and remember if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice and you enjoy the videos on both animaking and animaking too go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the animaking family and thank you for all of your help and support and remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new i'll be replying talking back to all of you so yeah without further ado guys let's begin this new Episode. Start the intro. So the last time we left off, Saruto was watching Naruto through his crystal ball as he noticed the color around the village looked dim and that only happened when Hoshirama was sad and seeing that Naruto was sad, he wondered could it be. As Saruto we went to meet with Naruto as he asked Naruto if he still wanted to become a ninja as Naruto said yes as Saruto got an envoy to train Naruto and that was Tenzo. As Tenzo was surprised when he realized Naruto has three affinities, earth, water and wind. Over the years, from 6 year old, Tenzo started training Naruto. As Naruto started to go to the academy, he didn't really show much of his skills, as he just wanted to keep it a secret for now, as Naruto was also reading in the library, and learning a lot of things about Konoha and the history. As Tenzo kept on training Naruto, some years passed as Tenzo told Naruto he had something different to teach him. As Tenzo was surprised that Naruto created a wood clone, as he was beyond shock as he told Naruto to keep that secret for now. As Naruto couldn't believe it, if he had this, that means he was a part of the Senju clan because the only member that possessed this was the first Okage. As Naruto decided to call himself Naruto Senju from now on, he's a part of clan and nothing else made him happier. As Tenzo went to talk to Saratobi, as Saratobi said that he had a feeling that Naruto possessed Mokitan after that night when he saw that the color on her own village dim when Naruto was sad, but when he was happy, the place seemed to bloom and light up with brilliant colors. And now that Naruto was happy, the place continued to bloom. Over the years, some more years passed as Tenzo kept on training Naruto as he also teach Naruto in Mokidon. As Naruto has gotten a lot stronger, for someone his age is really strong beyond any genie in his class. Now that Naruto is a member of the Senju clan, he decided to stop holding back so much at school and represent the Senju clan as both him and Sasuke fought. As Naruto shocked everyone by displaying a skill that not even Sasuke was up to that level as he knocked out Sasuke rather easily shocking everyone as the girls started to see Naruto in a new light. Some time then passed as it was finally time for the graduation exams to exit out of the academy as Naruto was heading towards school as he remember what happened when Tenzo let him meet the Kayubi inside of him. So yeah guys that was basically the last point left off. You guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So, what do you say we begin this new episode? We begin this episode a flashback. 12 year old Naruto. You want me to meet the Kayubi? Naruto asks. As he was not scared or anything, more like excited to meet his Bijou. Tenzo smile at Naruto's eagerness. Yes, I think it's time you set up a relationship with the Kayubi. There is no point in having all that power and not using it. As Naruto is ready. So, how do I meet him? Naruto asks. It's been said when a Jinjulki meditates, they can enter their mindscape where the Biju resides. That's what you're going to do. Have at it. So Naruto did as he was instructed as he sat down. After a good 10 minutes of steady breathing, Naruto felt a tug in his mind as he opened his eyes wide to see he was no longer in the forest. He was in a sewer. As he picked up himself, as he started to walk forward to the only path. After a long time, 
which was just a second in the real world, Nurkin came up to a cage, a rather huge cage. As Nurkin did not see anything, as he wondered if he went the correct way. Hello, Nurkin said. After no response, he thought he did something wrong. But he then saw giant red slitted eyes open looking at him. And finally the shadows covering the massive 90 the fox lifted. So this is my Jinjulki. Finally coming to meet me, huh? Said the Kayube looking at Naruto. Yes I am. My name is Senju Naruto and I am happy to meet you, Naruto said with a big smile. Normally I would tear to shreds. But your chakra is very calming and soothing. Not to mention this cage and seal is keeping me from doing so. So in the meantime I'll humor you, the Kayube said, as it rests its head on his paw. As Naruto gulped on the inside of being torn to shreds. Well, I just wanted to get to know you. You've been in here for 12 years and I still know nothing about you, despite what the legends say. Well, when I was researching the Bijus, I found out that there are 8 others in the world. And one thing that I noticed that the Ichibai has a name, Chicago. So it made me wonder, do all of you have names? If so, what's yours? The Kayubi was shocked, it heard what the boy sensei said, as he thought that the boy would just be here for power. The first human to ask if I have a name. As Kurama was shocked as he looked at Naruto beyond disbelief, as he became more interesting in his container, Kurama, my name is Kurama. As Naruto had a smile on his face, this went better than he expected. Well, Kurama, why did you attack Konoha? Naruto asked. He had always wanted to know why the Kayubi attacked. To be honest, a man with a Sharingan manipulate me, just because I'm near omnipotent. I just don't go around destroying places because I can. So while hypnotized by this masked man, he set me upon your village until your four Dokagi sealed me within you. Well, it's good to know that you didn't attack Konoha on your own, and that you're not a crazy biju trying to destroy everything. That's good, Nurka said. Hey, why does this place look like this? I thought it would be more complex like a seal on me, said Naruto as a place really looked like a sewer. It's not a sewer, kid, said Kurama as that shocked Naruto, but Naruto remember he was in his mind. His thoughts could be heard here. And for why it looked like this, I cannot tell, but it is closer in here. With your Mokitan chakra circulating, permeating the air in here. Well, as long as they're comfortable. I'm okay with it, Nurta said. Now down to the nitty gritty why I'm here. My sensei sent me in here to find a way to access your chakra. But I figure, we can become partners. With your Kekegenka, you can just steal my chakra at will. But you still ask for you to use it. Why, Kram said as he was confused. I wouldn't like it if someone stole my chakra. I would want them to ask for mission, and you know the golden rule. Do one to others as you will have others do one to you. So I decided to ask you if you'd lend it to me, Nurka said. What a surprising kid. From what I've seen from his life, he's different from all the rest. Maybe I'll give him a chance. Sure kid, but there are risks when using my chakra. My chakra is extremely powerful, too powerful for you to wield a lot of it at your current level. At most, you'll be able to use a tail of it for now at your level. But at this moment the seal is too tight, so only a tail word can be accessible to you. You would have to find a way to loosen it somehow. Even then you'd have to earn my trust to gain further access to my chakra. Well, can't I just rip that tag off Nurka said. It's not that simple. This piece of paper means nothing unless you loosen the seal itself. Plus I wasn't going to give you more than one tail word in the first place, so don't worry about it for now. Said Kurama, as Naruto agreed and decided he would do all it takes to learn and gain his Biju's trust. He mean, if the fox was there with him, why shouldn't they be friends? After an exchange of goodbye, Naruto left his mindscape. When Naruto returned to the physical world, he noticed Tenzo still there looking at him. As Naruto catched the hint, as he channeled his chakra, as he was surrounded by a reddish orange cloak. Well, what do you think, Naruto said? Tenzo became impressed, he didn't believe that Naruto would be able to get contact with the Biju and even get his chakra. Is that far as you can go? Asked Tenzo. If it isn't, go as far as you can go and tell me how you feel. Naruto nodded as the chakra turned red as it started to bubble a bit as he took a fox shape around him with a tail swishing behind him. It's amazing, Naruto said. I feel incredible. 
a lot faster and stronger. As Naruto went through Hansen, wood style, nativity of a sea of trees, as many trees exploded from the ground and they were rather tall. My Mokitan is stronger when using this chakra. I love it, Naruto said. Hmm, seeing that we should spar for you to get used to learn how to use your Bijou's chakra. As Naruto turned towards Tenzo, sure thing he said, let's go wild. End of flashback. Good time, said Kurama in Naruto's head. After two years of knowing each other, the both of them were on good terms. It was a weird relationship. Then again, what wasn't weird about a 13-year-old boy and a fox made from pure energy being friends? As Naruto was heading to the academy, a woman stepped out of her shop as she greeted him. Hello, Senju-san. Today is the exam test for the academy, right? As Naruto nodded with a smile. Well then, I wish you luck. Do your best, she said. I'll be rooting for you. And with that, she waved and smiled as Naruto did the same. As Naruto headed back to the academy, things changed since he became a Senju. Though it did take a month and blood test results. But after Sir Toby tested and talked to the populace, his status really changed in his village. But even still, he still wasn't the most populous person in Konoha. Because he still had the Kayubi inside of him. But a few people, just as a woman now, start to open up to him. As Naruto finally arrived at the academy, as he saw Sasuke as he went up and sat beside him, after that beatdown that Sasuke get almost 3 years ago, the both of them became friends. As Sasuke asked if he could train with Naruto, and even thanked him for helping him awaken his Sharingan, even though it was accidental. After a few time of training, the both of them became really good friends, you could say best friends. As Sasuke improved greatly, the first thing Naruto teach him how to tree and water walk. Even though there was still a gap between their skill levels, Sasuke was getting stronger and he also had two Tomos in each eyes. After the brutal training session with Naruto, a lot of them, Sasuke knew that Naruto was stronger than him, but they were rivals and friends and he will catch up. The two shared a fist bump as Naruto sat down. So today is the day we become Konoha Shinobi, Sasuke, Naruto said. Hmm, said Sasuke. You ready? You won't freeze up again after having flashbacks, Naruto asked. As Sasuke told Naruto about the massacre, he was the first person Sasuke shared the view of the store with since it happened. Yeah, I'm fine. I'll be good. Can't have you outshining me here. I'm the rookie of the year after all, said Sasuke. I could still kick your rookie of the year ass, you know. Tight like that mean nothing in the real world, said Naruto in a challenging tone. Sasuke turned his sharing gun on as he stared at Naruto. You want to test that theory now? Oh, so you got a pink eye with a uh, pattern. That doesn't scare me at all. Your body can keep up their eyes. I find that super hilarious to see a punch coming in slow-mo, but yet you cannot stop it. Hmm, that was all Sasuke said as he prepared for the exam as Naruto heard Krama chuckling in his mind, repeating pink eye over and over. Out of nowhere, two blurs rushed in the class. I win, Sakura said, with Ino by her side. You wish, the only hope you have in winning it's because your forehead gave you a huge advantage, Ino said back. You're just mad because Sasuke wouldn't date pigs like you, said Sakura. Before Ino could say anything, one of the other girls in the class shouted, Why would we want Sasuke? Naruto is way cuter. Have you seen those adorable whisker marks? As Ino mentally agreed. Ino wanted Sakura to become better. That is why she went along with this whole competition feud. But she was really crushing on Naruto. As Ino had a crush on Naruto since he was 9 when he handed her a beautiful flower that matches eyes. As she found out that Naruto liked flowers and anything dealing with plants, she also got to spend time with him when he volunteered at her family flower shop. The flowers always seemed to look better when he came by, plus he had the prettiest eyes ever. As she looked over as she saw Naruto chatting with Sasuke as a smile came on her face. Her thoughts were interrupted when Aruka came with Mizuki and told them to get to their seats, as the written exam started to be handed out. As Naruto looked over, he has always received a bad vibes from Mizuki. After the written exam, which was rather easy, it was time for the practical exam, which was a taijutsu spar with their instructor and demonstration of basic techniques. Many students did well in this part of the exam. Sasuke even managed to get a few nice hits on Aruka and even got 9 out of 10 for his efforts. 
Keep a fish that ate out of 10 and so did Hinata with her gentle fist style. Chose to receive a 7. Shino got a 6. Ino and Sakura and Shikamaru all got 4. Though Shikamaru forfeit once he got his 4th point because it was enough to pass. He said why bother? Then it was Naruto's turn as he was going to face Mizuki as he could tell that Mizuki wanted to harm him. But Naruto wasn't scared one bit. What occurred was the greatest ass whooping given to an academy teacher by a student. Mizuki didn't even got to move. Naruto was upon him too quickly and the match ended before it even started. As Mizuki was too overconfident after a surprising sunshine, as Naruto didn't even do any hand signs or anything, he just vanished. Mizuki got a left jab to the face, followed by a right kick. Before Mizuki could fall to the ground, Naruto delivered a powerful kick that sent him flying past Iruka. Definitely a 10 out of 10. Since Mizuki was out cold, Iruka continued to the ninjutsu portion. Shino Aberame pass, Choji Akamichi pass, Sakura Haruno pass, Hinata Ayuga pass, Kiba Inuzaka pass, Shikamaru Nara pass, Senju Naruto pass, Sasuke Uchiha pass, Ino Yamanaka pass. There was also another 18 civilian children who passed the exam as well. As Aruka gave a victory speech saying how proud he was of them and explained the life of a shinobi a bit until tomorrow when they will meet their sensei. We made it, said Naruto with a big smile on his face as he tied his black forehead protector around his forehead, a smile that everyone in the group of nine had on their face as well. Well, with Shino you could not see but Naruto could tell that he was happy. We should go to celebrate. Anyone want barbecue? said a happy Choji. Troublesome but I mean, said Shikamaru the smirk. And with that the nine of them headed towards one of Choji from their own restaurant. As they all spent a good time at the restaurant, eventually they all went their separate way. Several hours later, after the hours passed, Naruto started to wander around Konoha. It seemed the sun was going down soon. He would be able to watch the sunset from the Hokage's monument. With a sun shin, Naruto sat up on top of the fort Hokage's head. As Naruto felt at peace as he watched the sun went down, he decided to head home to get some rest before tomorrow. On his way, a shinobi fly past him and nearly smash into him. Naruto was about to say sorry but he noticed the shinobi was still running. Wait a minute, that's Mizuki sensei Naruto said. I wonder, why is he in such a rush? Wait, that scroll, I've seen it before Naruto said. Where have I seen it before? It then snapped Naruto. That's a forbidden scroll. But why would Mizuki have it? Why would he try to head out of the village with that scroll? A scroll that only Hokage can touch. It's obvious he's stealing it, said Kurama. Naruto looked around and made sure no one was watching him, as he created a wood clone to inform the Hokage, and with that he headed after Mizuki. Meanwhile, Mizuki was in the forest, as he had never felt happier. The forbidden scroll he finally got a hold of it. Now all he had to do was hand it to Orochimaru Sama and you will get the power he seek. As he started to get excited on how close he was to his dreams. However, Mizuki said a voice. Mizuki turned. This night just got better. This Kayubi brought us out here as well. As Mizuki stopped, the gods must love me. Having you show up out here, I can finally drop the act and kill you once and for all. Didn't I trash this guy earlier today? Is he crazy or to thought? It seems so, said Kurama with a chuckle. Don't give me that look, demon. You know why the people of this village hate you? Mizuki said that clear. It doesn't matter, Naruto said. It's because you're the Kayubi. You're a piece of crap fox that assaulted the village all those years ago. And now, you piece of crap. I'm going to end your miserable life, Mizuki said. As he got a rather big shuriken. Naruto started to feel Kurama Chakra circulating in his body. But he refused it because Kurama wanted to kill this guy. Rip him to pieces. Kill him, said Kurama. I cannot kill him, but I'm sure Jiji would know what to do with him to apply for your needs, Naruto said. Are you done, Naruto said, as he looked at Mizuki in a bored tone. What, said Mizuki confused, as he thought the boy would be having a mental breakdown right now. I already know what is sealing me, but I am Konoha Jenin. Send you Naruto and nothing will change that. Before I beat the crap out of you, I have to know, why did you take the scroll? For power? Or are you going to give it to someone? It seems I have to give you a little credit, but even a fool is right sometime. Since you will be dead soon, why not tell you? Lord Urchimar tasked me to retrieve this scroll, and I will become his right hand man. He will give me great power, 
said Mizuki. And I'll show everyone what I'm capable of, he said, as he launched the Fuma Shuriken towards Naruto. Orochimaru, one of Konoha's biggest traitors, Naruto said. The same one that performed the experiment on Tenzo Sensei. And with that, he sidestepped the Shuriken. That's a big mistake on your part, Naruto said. And I cannot forgive a traitor of the village. As Naruto waved one hand sign and slammed his hand on the ground. Earth style mud wall Naruto said as Mizuki turned to see a giant mud wall erupted behind him. As he turned back to the fox brat, as Mizuki had no idea he could use ninjutsu of this caliber. Naruto slammed his hands together, water style, water bullet. As Mizuki was caught off guard by the speed and the strength, as he sent him smashing into the mud wall. But he slowly picked himself up as he pulled the kunai, as he rushed at Naruto the battle cry. Naruto pulled out his own kunai and clashed with Mizuki's. Mizuki being stronger and taller, he had the advantage as he digged the kunai down, as it stabbed in Naruto's chest, as a smirk came on his face but that quickly vanished as Naruto turned into mud. Replacement? He barely had time to turn around as he saw Naruto coming at him, as Naruto lived a powerful punch to his stomach, with the Kayubi's chakra infused in it as that knocked the wing out of Mizuki. Naruto then jumped as he lived a Powerful roundhouse kick that sent Mizuki crashing head first into the stone wall, knocking him out cold. Naruto walked over to Mizuki and kicked him in the ribs. Yeah, he was out cold. As Naruto tied him up and got the scroll. At the tower, Hirzun was surprised when Naruto came in and told him about the scroll incident, but he relaxed. It was just a clone, and the real Naruto was in pursuit. He knew that Naruto could easily handle Mizuki at the level that the boy is now, but he made sure to send Anvu out just to make sure. But it was a waste to send his envoys as Naruto came in the office in the Shin with Mizuki and the scroll. You know that was a pretty fast Sunshin, Naruto-kun, said Hirzun. As he had a smile on his face, Naruto was back and unharmed with the scroll. Thanks. Well, I caught him and I beat him down and got by the scroll, Naruto said. As the clone simply nodded at his master and then poofed away. Naruto then got serious as he looked back at Saratobi. He was going to give the scroll to Orochimaru. This news startled Saratobi as anything Orochimaru related was terrible for Konoha. His favorite student has turned into a massive pain in the ass and it was his fault for not ending him all those years ago. I'm too old for this, he thought that sigh. But nevertheless, the scroll was back and Naruto caught the traitor who could be interrogated. Saratobi then looked at Naruto. You didn't peek at the scroll, didn't you? He asked. Of course not, Jiji. That scroll is for the Hokage's eyes only, Naruto said that smile. Good, said Hirzun proudly, as he realized how Naruto has grown in the past years. Well, thank you, Naruto. I suppose you need to get some rest, because tomorrow will be your team assignment, he said. Good luck, as Naruto nodded a smile, as he left behind Mizuki and the stroll, and with that he left. The next morning, Naruto awoke, as today would be amazing. He would get registered, and then meet his Jonin Sensei, as he went to get his picture taken. As he headed towards Saratobi's office, Hey JJ, said a happy Naruto after spotting Nerzun. Hello Naruto, I see you have your ninja registration. As he took the papers, well, Konoha Jenin, Senju Naruto, registration number 012607. You're official and looking good here my boy, said Nerzun. Before Naruto could say anything, he sent someone coming. As a person burst through the door, wheeled in a paper shuriken, Today is the day, old man, the kid said, but two steps in and he tripped over his scarf. Saratobi sighed, Naruto, this is Konohamaru. He wanted to defeat me in a battle to become the Hokage. Konohamaru picked himself up as he felt ashamed. He then turned, hey, you tripped me. I was this close to beating the old man, but you had to ruin it, said Konohamaru as he looked at Naruto the angry glare. You tripped on your own scarf, Naruto said, I had nothing to do with it. Another person then entered the room. Honorable grandson, as this voice was from Ebisu. As Ebisu heard Konohamaru shouting, What have you done to the Hokage's grandson? said Ebisu. As Konohamaru smirked, as he figured that Naruto was going to kiss his feet like all others. I did nothing to him here. He tripped on his own scarf, and I could care less if he was a Hokage's grandson. That means nothing to me, however. And if we're going by that, I outrank him seeing that I am related to two Hokages. As Naruto turned and waved goodbye to Sartobi as he vanished in a sunshine. 
as Colonel Hamru was staring in awe, as that was the first person they ever talk up to him like that and didn't act like he were their superiors. As he loved when person called him by his name, Colonel Hamru, and not the honorable grandson, he wanted people to see him for who he is. Naruto arrived at the academy as he was so early after greeting Sasuke, he decided to take a nap. After 20 minutes, Sasuke woke Naruto up. As Aruga came into the room, as he started to assign the team to their senses, as Naruto heard his name call, Senju Naruto and Sasuke Uchiha, every girl in the room perked up as the two hottest guys in the class was on a team as all of the girls wanted to be on a team with them and Sakura Haruno, your sensei will be Kakashi Hatake. yes, yes Sakura screamed love prevails over all she said as there was a lot of cursing in the room bullshit, not fear, forehead is with my man as most of the girls were cursing that Sakura got on a team with them after quieting down the class, Aruka continued with Team 8, Hinata, Kiba, and Shino. Team 9 is still in circulation, so Team 10 is Choji, Shikamaru, and Ino. As with that, the sensei started to come and take their kids until Team 7 was the only one left. Two hours later, Sakura was fuming as she wondered where the hell their sensei was, as Naruto merely shut his eyes as he went back to sleep. Sasuke was in between, he was calm like Naruto. But his eyebrow was twitching to show his irritation. I don't care if these guys are joining. Who the hell is two hours late? Naruto opened his eyes. Sakura, you're loud again, he said. Sakura blushed in embarrassment as Naruto had told her that he shrieked sometimes. And after F1 agreed with it, she wanted to tone it down. Naruto then turned his head towards the door. A few seconds later, a man with gravity defined silver hair came in. Team 7. But well, my first impression of you guys. You seem like a nice bunch, he said. Meet me up on the roof in five minutes. And with that, he poofed away. Once they arrived up there, Naruto saw his sensei reading an orange book. After he saw that everyone was ready, he put his book away. Glad you all made it. Now, how about we start by having you all introduce yourself? What should we say, asked Sakura? Hmm. How about your dislikes, your dreams for the future, and your hobbies, said Kakashi. Could you go first as an example? Said Sakura. Fine, my name is Kakashi Hatake. I do not want to tell you my likes or dislikes. Dreams for the future. Hmm, nah. I have many hobbies. Now you go, he said, pointing at Naruto. As Naruto realized he only told them his name, he shook his head. My name is Senjo Naruto. I like ramen, forests, and gardens. I dislike the three minutes it takes to make ramen, and I hate traitors. My dream is to surpass all the previous Okages, including in strength and status. And that way, everyone that acknowledge me and my hobbies. I have a bonsai tree and training, Naruto said, with a smile. Hmm, he has grown up interesting, said Kakashi to himself. He then looked at Sasuke. Now you. My name is Uchiha Sasuke. There are tons of things I dislike and only a few things that I like. And I don't use the word dream because I have an ambition. I will revive my clan and kill a certain man. Sasuke said. Figure that much. Said Kakashi to himself. He then turned towards Sakura. You now. My name is Sakura Haruno. I like. She then peeped at Sasuke. I mean my dream for the future is. Ah, she peeped at Sasuke again. Well, the thing I dislike is Inupi, she said. Typical girl her age. Love over Jutsu. Well, tomorrow start. The mark of Team 7. I will see you all for the survival training. Wait, survival training, said Naruto. Yes, yeah, said Kakashi. This is a training. With only 9 out of the 27 graduate pass, you have a 66% chance of failure. Meet me at 8 tomorrow morning. Bring your shinobi gear, and I suggest not to eat any breakfast. Before anyone else could say anything, he vanished in a poof. As Naruto thought about those words, he then said goodbye to his teammates as he vanished in a shanshin, as Sasuke decided to do some more training for tomorrow, as Sakura left as well, to prepare for tomorrow. The next day, 11 am, it had been a long 3 hour wait. They arrived at 8, waiting for their sensei, but it took him damn 3 hours to get there. As Sasuke was leaning on a tree as he waited, as he was angry, you can see it by looking on his face, as Sakura was fuming inside, Naruto simply meditated as he waited. 
as he was racking his brain over what his sensei said yesterday. As Kakashi arrived, yo, he greeted. You're late, Sakura yell, as the other two agreed as well, but not so loud. Well, you see, I was on my way here when I saw a black cat cross my path, so I didn't want bad luck, so I decided to take the longer way around. As the three of them eyebrow twitched, what kind of excuse is that? Alright, it's set till noon, said Kakashi, as he pulled the clock out and put it on one of the trees. He then took out two belts. Your task is to take one of these belts before noon. Those who cannot get a belt get no lunch, and I will tie you to a stump, said Kakashi. That is why he said not to eat, thought Naruto, as their stomachs rumble. And also the person that doesn't get a belt fail and go back to the academy. Meaning that one of you will be going back no matter what. You may use any ninja tool you have. And I recommend you come at me with the intent to kill or you will not get a bell. Now, begin! After seeing that all three of them scattered. As Kakashi pulled out his book and started to read. Several minutes went by and neither of them come for him. He just continued to read. As Sasuke was hiding in the trees watching Kakashi, trying to figure out the best time to strike. He then felt something behind him. As he turned, Naruto... What are you doing here? We need to find Sakura, I have something I need to tell you both, said Naruto. Sasuke would have argued if he did not take seriously from Naruto, as he just followed him. After a few minutes they landed near to the bush that Sakura was hiding under. After making her come over to them, Naruto started. This test is bullshit, he said, confusing the both of them. What do you mean by that? And hurry up, you're wasting my time. I need to get one of those bells, Sasuke said. Sakura, what is the standard Jenin team in Konoha, Nerta said. Well, three Jenins and one Jonin, Sakura said. Thank you, Nerta said. And, to make it even worse, there was no academy student who cannot take on a Jonin after just coming out of the academy. That just doesn't happen. The only way our chances would rise is if we're working together, and that is still a low chance. That means, it's about working together, not getting the bells. Because it doesn't matter how hard we try, he's a Jonin. So, in that case, we need to work together. And in any case, if I'm wrong, you can both have the bells. I don't mind doing another year. Sasuke and Sakura merely nodded. They weren't really convinced, but they figured working together with him. Perhaps they could all win. Several minutes later, Kakashi lowered his book a bit as he saw Nurta stand in front of him. You know it's standard knowledge. The hides want presence and strike from a blind spot, right? Asked Kakashi as he put down his book. As he put it away, he knew how good Naruto was. It wouldn't make any difference, Naruto said. One, you already know where I was. Two, you have one of your eyes covered. So you likely find a way to cover your blind spots. Because that eye cover is a huge blind spot. So you must have find a way to work around it. And three, I figure out your test is teamwork. But there's a major flaw within it. As Kakashi was surprised by Naruto's analysis. But he wonder what kind of flaw did Naruto see in his test. You can't expect three first Jenny to come in and show teamwork. Teamwork happened over bonding together in missions and doing the simplest things. Though it is a great test to find out if a team hold the will of fire towards each other. It is still difficult to do all of that in just one hour, Naruto said. But let us see what we have. As he placed his hand in a half ram seal, as he vanished in a sun chin. As Kakashi spin around and blocked the kick from Naruto. As Kakashi felt his hand tingle a bit. The strength behind his kick is immense. Hmm, quite strong for his age. As Naruto fell to the ground and did a sweep kick, but Kakashi jumped over it. Naruto then twisted his body as he was about to cut the strings that hold the bells. But Kakashi quickly jumped back. To think, he was so close already. He's quite impressive. Naruto held his hand together. Temple of Nirvana technique, he said, as Kakashi saw white feathers appear around him, as he quickly dispelled the Genjutsu. But as soon as he dispelled it, several kunai stabbed him straight in the back. But Kakashi switched plates to a log. Shortly after that, Sasuke heard a scream. It seems like Kakashi had taken out Sakura. I guess we go to plan B. As Kakashi saw, Sasuke activated the Sharingan as he was right behind Sasuke. Sasuke flipped around as the both of them enter a Taiju to battle. As Kakashi was surprised how near Sasuke got as his finger graced one of the bells. As Kakashi then jumped back as he didn't notice the three line of mud on the ground around him. The line were in a perfect square surrounding Kakashi. 
as he saw Naruto jump out of a tree. Earth style mud wall. As the only open path was in front of Sasuke. As mud wall surrounded Kakashi in a three sided box. As Sasuke speed through hand sign, fire style, fireball jutsu. As he fired off a huge fireball straight into the opening. Damn, that's a good combo, said Kakashi. As the fireball impacted. Once the steam cleared away, they noticed he wasn't there. As Naruto looked around, as he didn't look down, but it was too late as a hand grabbed both him and Sasuke's feet as it pulled them underground. Earth style double suicide decapitation technique, said Kakashi as he popped up a few feet away. That was nice teamwork from you, a great combination, you almost had me there, but you didn't. Too bad you didn't get a bell. He then saw Sakura charging at him. Seems like Naruto must have woken her up while I was in battle with Sasuke in the Taijutsu. Sadly, she was too weak to face him. But before Kakashi could do anything, Naruto grabbed him in a full Nelson. As Sasuke pulled a kunai and thrust it, as it cut the wire to the two bells, as Sakura dived forward. It was all for naught as the timer went off. So close, Naruto thought. As they were brought up to the stumps, they passed with flying colors. But why not see to the extent? Thought Kakashi. As he tied Naruto to a stump. How did you get out of that? He asked. Earth style hiding in mole technique. At which point Kakashi simply nodded. As he told them he would give them a second chance to get the bells. But they are not supposed to feed Naruto. And seeing that he was the first under the attack. He will be tied up and not getting food. And with that he poofed away. We were so close said Sakura she opened her bento and started to eat. As Sasuke simply shrugged. As he couldn't wait for another chance. As he started to eat as well. We will get him next time, said Naruto, as he was wondering if he was wrong in his true meaning of the test. They should have passed by now, right? Yet, they didn't. His stomach then rumbled, as Sasuke then turned, as he handed his food over to Naruto. We need you. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have been so close in the first place. So here, heat up. You will not be at full strength if you're handicapped by hunger. Sasuke is right, said Sakura. You need to eat something and you can eat from mine since I don't eat as much as Sasuke. As she took out some food to her chopsticks, as she was about to feed Naruto, when there was a huge poof in front of all of them. You dare defy my rules? I told you not to feed Naruto yet. You disobey my orders. What do you have to say for yourself before I give out defying punishment? As he held out a ram seal, as the sky started darken, as lightning started to tackle. Freaked out by the sudden appearance of Kakashi, Naruto shouted, because we're a team, Teammates look out for one another. That's what Konoha is built upon. Teamwork. Well, if that's all you have to say, said Kakashi. Then you all pass. As everything returned to normal. What? All three of them said. Naruto was correct. This test was to find out. If you all can work together, other than taking on me separately. It was an incredible task. To take on a Joni in your fresh out of the academy. Had you forsaken your teammates and work alone. You'd have failed even if you got the bell. You all did the opposite and that is why we're now officially Team 7. Remember these words. Those who break the rules are scum. But those who abandon their friends are even worse than scum, said Kakashi. Be ready because tomorrow will be the first mission of Team 7, he said. As Kakashi poofed away. As Naruto got out of the ropes. Now that we have more time. Do you all want a trainer to ask? Especially you, Sakura. Sasuke and I are more advanced than you and we need all the legs of our team to be up if we want to be the best team possible. Sakura smiled as she agreed as she would get more time to spend with them and her precious Sasuke and get stronger as well. Time skip 6 weeks later. d rat mission or chores. Team 7 had done 48 d rat missions in the past 6 weeks. Many bunch of craps if Naruto could say. As Kakashi revealed that he knew about Naruto's Mokitan. As he also showed Naruto the rock clone technique. Naruto also moved to level 3 of Fuinjutsu sealing techniques involving explosive seals. He started to attach them to his earth clones to have a deadly surprise to his earth clone techniques. As Sasuke added a few more fire techniques, one of them being fire style, phoenix sage fire technique, and fire style dragon technique. He also managed to learn several clan genjutsu from his clan library. For some reasons, Kakashi even gave him tips. How Kakashi knew so much about the Sharingan, he didn't know, but he accepted it. Even Sakura, her stamina, her strength and her speed 
has increased over the past six weeks. She also have amazing chakra control as she got three walking and water walking rather quickly. As Nurta suggested that she became a medic nin, as she was happy to hear that, she wouldn't catch them in the other shinobi arts, but being a medic nin added a great value to the team. As she learned in the beginning, medical ninjutsu, as she could only heal small bruises and cuts, but it was better than nothing, and she was happy, and happy to be a part of that team. As Kakashi noticed the progress that his team made individually, as he decided that they move on to a higher rank mission. But for now, I'm going to be ending this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this series, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on the bell notifications they posted. Remember to share to all of your friends in social media platform. And also guys, stay in tune for the rest of the What Ifs coming your way. I post a new episode of What If Naruto is a Badass Genius over an Anime King. And I'm going to be posting a new episode of What If Naruto was sent to the Marvel world. So stay in tune for that and I hope you guys enjoy. And I'm also going to be posting What If Naruto is a Deceitful God on this channel. So stay in tune for that as well guys. But for now, I'm out of here. See you guys soon. Peace.